<laughs> Episode seven and eight of The Last Dance just finished. Carl Collage for the Sports Set List by the fans and for the fans. We are here to review it. I have some very special guests, but we have our resident coach, Coach Walmack, is in the building. Coach, welcome back to the panel. Happy to be here. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And we have Jay Lex, uh, your arch rival, the Bulls yep. fan who hates the Knicks. I had to bring him on an episode for you, yeah. Mac. Yes. Hey, Lex, Lex. I had I'm I'm happy happy Mother's Day to everybody. As you can see, I had to break out my my, my Bulls gear here. You oh. know what I'm saying? The snapback, the the Mitchell and Ness. You know what I mean? Let's break it all out for this episode. Ninety degrees in your house, and you've got a winter jacket on. Don't, don't, don't worry about don't worry about it right now. You know. And we have from the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast a good friend of mine, Dexter. Dexter, finally me and you on a podcast together. Welcome, I know. You, brother. I know. Glad to be here. I'm not not a fan of uh, Alex's gear over there. It's, it's a little whack to me, but you know. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> We're we, we going to let him rock. we let him rock. All right. As Womack said, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, to um, the, the, the living moms, the, the past, the deceased moms. So everyone out there, I hope they enjoyed the day. So let's get right to it. The last dance, we open up with Michael retiring after the first three-peat. And there are a lot of rumors circulating that still believe, some people still believe he retired because it wasn't a retire. It was a cover-up that David Cern, that he had um, his gambling debts and there was a way to for him to go away for a year and a half. Um, Michael shut it down. Um, a lot of people around him in his circle shut it down. Even David Stern shut it down. But I'm still reading comments where people saying it's completely bogus. Dexter, what do you think? Yeah, I, it's funny. I said this on my podcast a couple of weeks ago, which was that, look, I don't understand how anybody would think that David Stern would have his cash cow in Michael Jordan, the guy who's bringing in all the money for the league, number one player, all the fan interest, right? This is the guy that kind of sparked globalization in sports. And he's going to say, you know what? Just go, get out of here. Go away. Look, even if Michael Jordan had a gambling problem, guys, David Stern is going to tell him, look, you need to calm this down. This is what you need to do. Get him some help or whatever. But there's no way the NBA, as a business in America we're talking about, is going to take their number one cash cow and say, go to the side. I never bought it before. I didn't really need the confirmation tonight. But I was glad to see people like David Stern and others talk about it. I never bought it at all for one bit. All right, Bulls fan, Jay Les, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Do you think it's bogus or do you believe it? I, I don't believe it for a single solitary second. The reality is this. Michael Jordan made not millions, but billions of dollars, not just for the NBA, but for multiple organizations. There's no way that they're going to be like, oh, you know what? You have a gambling issue. Take a year and a half off. Go play, go, go play baseball like your father wanted you to. There's just... They would let him, they'd get him counseling. They would do a bunch of other things. They'd do some kind of expose, like his, he has a gambling issue and he's trying to get it fixed. They're, you're not going to take your cash cow and tell him to go play for the White Sox or any other organization for that matter. It's just, I, I don't buy it for, not for two seconds. And I'm a conspiracy guy, and I don't even buy that, so. Coach? I mean, listen, let's think about it. Uh, he had breakfast with B.J. Armstrong. Right after breakfast with B.J. Armstrong, they go to the Bulls facility. He practices, and he says, yeah, I want to come back, but let me call David Stern first because he gave me an 18-month suspension. What's 18 months? Like, look at the timing. It's ridiculous. Maybe if it was a year, maybe two years. It's, it's the middle of the season when he came back. And you think that he just – if there was a suspension, they just said, okay, you know what? Now is the time, MJ. You've learned everything you have to learn in March. And you can make – it's ridiculous. It's stupid. It's any – and then listen to this one. Jerry Reinsdorf, he owned the Bulls. He owns the White Sox. So you're going to take him from one ownership, and if you, Jerry Weinsdorf, and you know he has a problem gambling, you're going to hire him in your other organization to play baseball? To a sport, to a sport that has had a history. A history. Rose of gambling, gambling on the sport and all the attention and cost of that. Why would you bring him to that it's sport and have issue with that? Listen, Why? it was ridiculous. And like, and like they said, a lot of people, I even see it in the comments today, most of the idiots who say this, are the idiots who just want to promote other players as the GOAT. If you want, if you want to make a GOAT argument, great. Use stats. Don't go to personal lives and say his father got killed because of a gambling. They start creating all these mis novel mysteries and murders. Yeah. I remember hearing that. I remember hearing that back in the day, and I was like, this, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Okay. I, don't, I, don't, right. I don't buy any of it. It's nonsense. So, so during his absence in 1994, um, Jay Lex's favorite player we saw in Scottie Pippen, Yo. Scotty Pippen kind of, you know, there was a game, there was an important game where Scotty did not want to go into the game because Phil drew a play for Tony Kukoc. We already saw in the previous episodes how, how, how Jordan and Pippen felt about Tony Kukoc uh, back to the Olympics and how they treated him. 
Now here comes to him being a bull. Uh, Phil Jackson says, I'm going to draw the play for, for a coup coach to make a game-winning shot. He's had history of doing it during the season. And Scotty decides he's not going in the game. And Phil says, excuse my language, fuck it. All right, fine. I'm going to go with, with Ku coach. Ku coach makes the game-winning shot. How is that reaction? Did Pippen quit on the team? How, how, how was that taken? He eventually apologized to his teammates about it. But in that position, was he right or was he wrong for sitting out in that play? Coach, as a player? I mean, as a player and as a coach, he's absolutely wrong. There's, there's, no, there's no excuse for it. I mean, I'm, ha- I'm, I'm, pro- I'm not happy. I get it as a man. He said, I won't go back and, and I wouldn't do anything over. Of course, who would do anything over when you've won six championships? Okay, you learned your lesson from it. You moved on and your life still turned out pretty well. You still became a multimillionaire and you learned from an unfortunate event. But at that time, that, that showed poor sportsmanship. That showed he wasn't a leader. I mean, there were other games where Michael Jordan got the ball and told other players, yo, be open. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you off with the basketball. LeBron James, he's, he's not selfish. He moves the Scotty Pippen, like, that, that was ridiculous. And as a coach, I'm happy Phil stuck to his gun because, as you saw, that play worked early in the season, you know? Yeah, but, but you know what? Um, President Scotty Pippen said he would have did it again. He, did, he, did, he was okay. He, he, he was okay with his decision. So, Dex, yeah. how, how, how do you feel about that? About him being okay with the decision? Yeah, like, just... I mean, I kind of with Jamal on this, right? Like, it's easy to say you're okay with the decision when you know how... I think, he kind of, I think we kind of lost him. Hopefully he comes back. Titles. So I guess he's okay with it. I am a little bit disappointed to see that, you know, he was not necessarily um, in the moment had that leadership ability to step up and say, hey, this is what I shouldn't do. I think who needs to be given a lot of credit, though, is Bill Cartwright. Because I think when he, when he st- stepped mm-hmm. up and he made that speech and he was so passionate and emotional, it actually gave Pippen the opportunity to – one, he was a man, let's give him credit. He stepped up in the moment and said that he was wrong. But I think that impassioned speech by Bill Cartwright allowed for the team to really come together and really say, like, yo, damn, this really hit us. And I think for any of us that have played organized sports, it's like, yo, when you're in this as a team, it's about all of us being together. You know, Coach Womack can speak to that too. you got to be together. If one person's not in it, that's never cool. So I kind of wish Pippen had said a little bit more of, like, look, what I did then wasn't cool. I'm happy how everything turned out for us. But, like, by him saying he would just do it again kind of brushes it a little bit to the side. So I didn't like how he handled that. Specifically. So, so Jay Lex, Jay Lex, who is, the, who is the Bulls fan, he did a vlog. I don't know, Dexter, if you saw it. There was a big debate in the sports hit list about Scottie Pippen being a superstar. I don't think this makes his case for being a superstar to quit on your team Never. in a playoff game. So do you still give him that superstar Never. knowing what you know now after watching episode seven? Yeah. Let's be clear. He was completely and totally wrong for what he did. I can agree with you 100%. He should have never done it. I can understand his frustration because, remember, he's the alpha on the team now. He's number one. He played behind Michael Jordan, the greatest, the greatest superstar in the history of American in international sport, you know, whatever the case might be. So now Michael Jordan retires. He leaves. This isn't game five of 82. This is seven-game series against Womack's New York Knicks, a formidable, a, a formidable opponent for the Chicago Bulls, and you put the ball in the hands. I think Tony Kukos at that point was a rookie or yeah, like second year in the league. Yeah. He wasn't even a starter. You know what I'm saying? So you yeah. take the ball out of his hand. I'm not, he, he made shots. I'm not saying he didn't. I'm simply saying while I don't condone his actions, I can understand the frustration. This was the year that Scott Griffin came out. He was averaging 22. Nine and six. He was an all star. He was, he was, if you, people already knew him as a defender, but now he was that complete package. And you took the ball out of his hands and put it into the hands of a rookie. He shouldn't have done it. I understand, but I do understand the frustration. And I don't like the way he handled it either at the end where he said, I would have done the same thing. Coach, coach, you have a rebuttal? I'm sorry, go ahead, coach. Real quick, call. Listen, it was 1.8 seconds left. Had there been 10 seconds left, there's no doubt in my mind the play would have been called for Scotty. This is when people have to realize it's fanship and then there's coaching, why coaches get played the millions of dollars and why Phil Jackson has all his rings. It's 1.8 seconds left. I'll tell you about when we played at St. Francis, Call. I don't know if you were watching at this time. There was a game against Lafayette, my first year coaching. Jalen Cannon, 
player, first team all conference, one of the best plays in St. Francis history. We got about two seconds left. We're playing Lafayette at home, and we got to get a we got to get a bucket. We're down by two. Coach calls a play for Alex Isolovich. And he hits a three off the backboard, and we win the game because it was two seconds left, and Coach knew with the timing, all the defense were going to look at Jalen. He was a decoy, and we got it to one of our best standstill shooters, and he hit the shot to win. Coaches have to make decisions that's not based on popularity. Their, their record and their gamesmanship is on the line as well. So some, that's why you got to get out of yourself when you got to get into your team. I, I, com you know, I completely totally understand that point of view. But with 1.8 seconds left, are you taking the ball out of Michael Jordan's hand? I'm not saying Scottie Pippen's Michael Jordan. No, no, because but, 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 but you can't compare Scottie Pippen's standstill shooting in that situation. How many game winners has Pippen hit? Tony Kukoc, you got you can't you can't count what he did in the NBA. Tony Kukoc has a Texas long. This is where you just let them go and just watch. Got a long, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just back and watch. Long history in Europe. The Euro League is tough. He had a history of hitting game-winning shots since he was like 15, 16 years old, and it it worked that season. The same exact play. Why wouldn't you win the same play in the same taking it off on the same? I'm not saying side. that they shouldn't or they shouldn't have. I'm simply saying when Scottie Pippen's the alpha, you don't take the ball out of your superstar right. hand. Now I understand there's 1.8 seconds left. I, I completely and totally understand that. But Scottie Pippen is the best player on that True. team. And, and even though Tony Kukos player, was an amazing player. European player, he wasn't even a starter in the NBA. Yeah, but they work. They listen, work, listen. They work I, during, I, hold on. Carl, one question. Yes, one more. Go ahead. Did Kukos hit the shot and they won? Yes, of course. He, yes, he hit the <laughs> shot. But it's, <laughs> once again, I'm giving you all. I'm giving you everything. I'm giving you the entire thing. It's just, no, yeah, Jay Lex, I'm just, giving you a, I'm just giving you a heads up. Tomorrow in the group. You're going to get attacked because I know oh, that's yeah, going to be a narrative. I'm, I'm it's, it's coming. <laughs> it's going to be a great narrative tomorrow, and you know I'm going to run with it. So I'm giving you a heads up. I'm going to, I'm going to bait it. <laughs> what you got to do, I understand. I'm here for it. I'm, I'm, I got all the time in the world now, so it's not as if I'm working right now. So I'm, I'm here for everybody. All I'm right. Just simply saying, I'm simply saying I understand you put the ball in. I understand you ran the same play during the regular season. But this is a best of seven against your, your, your most formidable opponent, and you put it in the hands of a rookie. And if I'm Scottie Pippen, all-star all MVP, top five player in top five, top ten player in the NBA, I'm going to be frustrated. I don't agree with what he did, but I understand the frustration behind it is what I'm saying. I understand okay. why uh, he sat down. Even all right, right. that's a fair. So now let's discuss um, Jordan and his teammates. That was another emphasis in this episode, um, the consistent barrage on Scotty Burrell, him getting into a fight with Steve Kerr, him calling his teammates a dumbass. And Jordan said, this was my way to motivate. And if you can't get on my level in terms of winning and understanding my culture, then don't bother playing. Is that okay for players to, put, to, to treat teammates like that, even though it does work? And, and even Will Perdue was saying, Jordan wasn't a nice guy. And, and people understood that, but he was a winner. So do you necessarily have to be a nice guy and people to like you in order to, to, to play on someone's team? Is that an issue? Or are you okay with treating them like assholes, but then still winning championships? Uh, coach? Um, I was I was watching that that part of it, and I, you know, I, I was kind of mixed messaging because you know, as a coach, I try and teach my players to talk to someone as they would like to be talked to. You know, uh, as a man, you just want to be respected. But here's my thing on that: Would you rather be on the '90s Bulls teams, or would you rather be playing for the '90s, let's say, Golden State Warriors teams? After, after Chris Mullen left, where everybody's hunky-dory. We're just happy to be in the league. I'm happy to get my check. Let's go home. Let's go. Which one would you rather be? Who, who has a documentary right now? Who's sitting down with their kids during quarantine 20-some-odd years later and saying, I was a part of something special? Yeah, I went through the fire, but I'm a part of history. Give me history over that hunky-dory, we all the world type situation. I want to be a part of history. So, Dexter, so Dexter yeah. but let me play devil's advocate here. The LeBronians and LeBron's fans, they're going to say, well, LeBron doesn't have to curse out his teammates in order for him to win championships. I can hear it coming tomorrow. So what are your thoughts in terms of you can compare this to the new NBA where we see a lot of buddy-buddy players where maybe they don't necessarily motivate their teammates by cursing them out or, or calling them dumbasses. What are your thoughts on that in terms so of the way thing, you So my thing is leadership has many different styles, right? Like, I don't think there's one way to lead. I don't think there's one way you got to play it. However... I kind of lean a lot to what Jamal said. Look, man, it's about results. It's about winning. And if somebody was an asshole and then he was six for six in the finals, psh, great. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I'm not terribly up, upset about it. Like, hey, if there was more of an asshole nature on my New York Knicks teams, I might be a little bit happier. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know that. But I think Jordan, 
I respect his mentality. You know what I mean? Even as a Knicks fan who hated him and the Bulls growing up, I respect the mentality of being like, look, I got to get these people that aren't as maybe talented as me to get to this level. And I think that's something we don't understand about superstars. When people are that good at what they do, they almost look at these people like, yo, how is it they can't do what I do or work as hard? So they got to find another way to get them as close to that level as possible. So I understand what Jordan was doing. If people, honestly, if people want to look at him like an asshole or a jerk or whatever or think that he wasn't a great guy, at the end of the day, he, li- he lived with that decision and he won six titles, man. Like, I don't think he gives a damn about what most people think anyway, whether he was an asshole or not. Um, yes. Jay Lex, in terms of the teammates, his teammates were able to handle it. You know, you look at guys like Will Purdue, um, Jed Busher, Scotty Burrell, um, Steve Kerr got punched in the face. So if the teammates don't have a problem with it, why would the media necessarily have a problem with the way he treats his teammates? Because there's, there is something to talk about. The reality is we all, the, the aura around Michael Jordan was he was not only a great competitor, but he was just a really nice guy. And now you see this footage of him like being an asshole. And people are like, I can't believe he treated people that way. But sometimes that's what you have to do, like the other two gentlemen said here. That's what you have to do to get people on your level. You can't always be nice and, and want to go out to dinner afterwards. It's about results. They won six championships in a decade. How many other teams can you say that throughout, excluding maybe the Boston Celtics of the early 50s? Yeah, there we go. The, you know, the oh, early God. days, you know, before free agency. But beyond that, who, who do you know is winning multiple championships? And, you, and the, the great thing they had was Scottie Pippen was kind of the nice guy. We, we talked earlier about Scottie Pippen and his issues, but he was kind of the nice guy. He was the one who, you know, shook your hand afterwards and, and, was, and was, you know, calm in that situation. Michael Jordan had to, you know, they talked about it. I, Michael Jordan had to be the bad guy. Why? Because in, the ultimate goal is winning a championship. And you can't have everybody be nice all the time. We saw, you know, with the late Kobe Bryant, with some of his things. He barked on people all the time. You hear, I would hear stories from, like, Kenny Smith, like the early days of the Rockets before um, Hakeem, you know, became a, a Muslim and, you know, found religion and everything like that. Those guys cursed each other out. They yelled at each other. They did the whole bit. We're just hearing about the Bulls. This is what it takes in order, especially in sports, in order to become a champion. You can't be nice all the time. So if you need somebody to berate you occasionally, whether it's Scott Burrell or Steve Kerr getting punched in the face, even though I don't condone that. That's, that's what needs to happen. There's got to be a little bit of tension. It can't be nice all the time. All right. And to my last point, Coach, we're oh, talking call, about call, the- call. Go Because Jay likes brought something up that I think is important to hear. If you talk to Jordan's early teammates, they wouldn't tell you he was this type of person because he grew into the leader he saw would get the most success out of his teams. Once he won the championship, he figured out what his leading, uh, how he should lead. He wasn't like that in young Mike. 84, 85 Mike to 88 Mike wasn't belittling teammates because he was still trying to figure out. Once he got to the mountaintop and figured, this is how I can be a leader, Phil Jackson is a zen kind of coach. Remember, his first coaches were fiery. Collins was a fiery coach. Phil Jackson was so monotone and so calm, he knew he had to be the fiery one. So you got to look at the history of Jordan. He, he didn't come in the league as this type of guy. He morphed into this type of leader. And when he saw it was productive and they were winning, he stayed with it. Uh. To my last point, Coach, we talked about this um, before we went on. A lot of, again, the LeBron fans are attacking. We know this because they're comparing LeBron to Jordan in the whole group debate. And, uh, and a stain on, and on Jordan's legacy, I guess you can say people have, is a problem of him leaving for two, a year and a half and coming back. And they say the Jordan fans forget that he got eliminated by the Orlando Magic in 1995. And the Jordan fans will say, well, he was, he was poorly conditioned. He wasn't ready to play at a high level. But then the non-Jordan fans will say, well, he was able to have 55 against the Knicks. He was still playing at a high level. So do we kind of give Jordan a pass for 1995? Or do we still kind of use that and say, you know what? He took an L in 95 against the Magic. Does, does he get a pass for that? Jay Lex, what do you think as the Bulls fan? Do we give him a pass? No, he doesn't get a pass for it. There, there's some truth in I, I don't think he gets a pass because, you know, which again, you still lost. They were, you, you still lost to the Orlando Magic, whether, because you still played well during the regular season. But I will say he wasn't in the greatest basketball shape, even though he was dropping 55 and all that stuff. The playoffs are a different beast. And now people are seeing you for a seven game series. And so they know what's, they know, you know, they're doing their scouting reports. They know what's going on. This is not, like I said before, game 15 of 82. Now they, they're hunking down on you. And that Orlando Magic team was, was lit. Let's not, let's not kid ourselves. Right. That was a, one of the best lineups probably that we've ever seen that hasn't won a championship. I mean, 
they should have gone on to at least win one. But I mean, you had Shaq, you had Penny, you had you had Dennis Scott and Rick, and Nick Anderson, both three point shooters, and Horace Grant, who was, you know, play, basically the stretch four in those days. So they were right. a really good team. So and then not to mention also Horace Grant was a big part of the Bulls' first repeat, and now he's playing for Orlando Magic. He knows the ins and outs of Phil Jackson. That kind of played into their favor. Coach, what do you think? Because you said you were having that conversation in some of your group chats. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't give him a, a pass either, you know, but I do understand this. Like Jay Lux said, there's a difference in terms of playoff intensity, college basketball as well. You know, the intensity rises, and there's a difference in terms of stamina and legs. You know, Jordan was playing a different sport, but at the end of the day, when LeBron lost because Kevin Love and Kyrie got injured, I didn't give him a pass either. You play. You step on the court, you tie your sneakers up, you get out there and play. Jordan lost in 95. Orlando Magic, great team, took nothing away from that team. You know, and he came back the next year, and he was motivated, and you saw what they did the next year. You know, so, nah, no pass at all. Jordan lost. He's lost before. He lost in, during the run, and then he lost in, with the Wizards. That's it. It's, it's a part of his story. Yeah. So, Dex, do Jordan fans uh, give Jordan a pass in 1995 and kind of forget it and glass over it when they talk about his legacy? Do Because for me, I, I, I will admit, during conversations, they don't bring up 95 as much as yeah. other people will. They don't really talk about it. What do you think? I understand why people don't bring up 95, right? Like, I do, I will say this, right? I think two things can be true. I do think to some degree, I look at it like, look, he came back on, what was that, March 19th of that year, and yep. he had about a month to get ready for the playoffs. Um, for all of us that have played basketball, you understand, like, to get into basketball shape, that's hard. Now, I know the argument is he had 55, and I agree with Jay Lex's point is very spot on that, doing something in the regular season in your, I believe that was his third game back, is not the same as doing the playoffs when people are scouting for you. And we have to put some respect on that Magic team, yes. as j Lex said yes. as well, too. Magic, that, that was a really good Magic team. I mean, great starting five, really good team. I think people conveniently eliminate it from the Jordan narrative, right, which is not cool. You can see, it's fine to say he was not in basketball shape. I have no problem with that. But, like, let's talk about it for what it is, like Womack was saying. An L is an L. This guy got an L and on, on one of his runs. He came back from baseball. Let's just tell the whole truth. You can't tell somebody's story, an arc of their career, rise and falls, ups and downs, anybody's life, not just sports, with just omitting one piece when you feel convenient to do so. So, no, I'm not, I'm not with that. I understand that he was not in basketball shape, but look, man, an L is an L. Like Womack said, when you step out in that court as a competitor, you step out in the court as a competitor. Record books are going to call it an L, and that's how it should be looked at. Well, gentlemen, thank you for joining me on the special Zoom for episode seven and eight. Next week, Coach and I will be joined by the LeBronians. I'm finally bringing in the LeBron fans to kind of end up the whole show to <laughs> kind of see their perspective, if their perspective have changed. So we have, of, <laughs> we have a lot of we have a lot of them in our group. Say again, Is it Marcus. I, I got Marcus. I got Brandon. I got Andres. I got all of them for you, man. I, I got them all for you. Can I stare at the screen and just say something real quick? <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Marcus, please do. You are not low. <laughs> We've been watching all these episodes, and then all of a sudden, a week before you come on, you want to write an op-ed in the sports hit list and, and write about this ode to who is this documentary. I will see you next week. Come prepared. <laughs> come prepared. <laughs> next week will be great. Uh, again, gentlemen, thank you. Oh. Dexter, please give your podcast a shout-out so people can join in. So yeah, man, you catch, you catch us on, uh, yeah, you catch us on A Hard Style Podcast. Follow us on Twitter at AHCT Podcast. Recent episode, we have Womack on. Uh, with us a couple episodes back. So, uh, Carl, we got to get you on. We got to get you on, too. Absolutely, man. Let me know. I'm home doing these Zooms. I'm pretty much trying to get as much as we can done without studio. I literally tried to build my own studio with cameras and everything from home. So, I got the setup. Just let me job, know what man. works for You're you. You're doing a good job. Like, Yo, Carl. What's up, man? By the way, yes. way to conveniently leave out that today's episode showed the Knicks beating the Bulls in the playoffs. But we ain't even going to go there. Oh, yeah. We ain't even going to go there. We ain't even going to go there. Just left yeah. it out. I forgot I about that. Out. I forgot like, about that. Out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Coach. Coach. Coach, go ahead. Talk about it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. When, when we had the Charles Smith episode when he missed the layups, yeah, I want to talk about, Coach, how did it feel as a Knicks fan tonight to watch? How did it bring back bad memories? But today you want to say, Coach, how did it feel to watch you guys beat the Bulls and bring back good memories? We ain't going to do that, though, right? Because they don't fit the media narrative. <laughs> they play like champions. They play like champions. Yeah, we play like – no, you guys play like champions that year. You play like <laughs> You play like yeah. – So, Womack, you're done? Listen, are you good with the Knicks? Are you done? Can I, can I wrap up or are you good? Yo, what, 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 what um, Baby said, what he said? I'm, I'm finished. I'm done.
Okay, all right, all right. Thank you for watching the Sports Hit List by the fans and for the fans. Special shout out to J Lex for joining me. Make sure you check out his workout videos on the Sports Hit List. He got a lot more stuff coming. Ain't hard to tell a podcast. Coach will be joining us next week. Like, share, comment, subscribe to Sports Hit List by the fans and for the fans on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all over social media. Take care.